This is a disc launcher that shoots mini frisbees. And this is a mega disc launcher that shoots actual frisbees. And today I've invited a bona fide Billbox subscriber to face off against me in a mini frisbee shooting competition. But what she doesn't know is I won't actually be shooting mini frisbees. Welcome to Crunch Labs, Eloise. Thanks. You get a box, I get a box, and then uh, we have a, a little bit of an accuracy competition. 20 minutes on the clock, you'll build it over there, I'm gonna go in there. Are you ready? Yeah. May the best engineer win. Clock starts now. And so with build time expired, it was time for our competition. <laughs> I I went a little overboard. Mine fires actual frisbees. Which for sure wasn't cheating. So with that, it was time to start our super fair shooting competition. Starting first with the hole that comes inside the box. And so while we technically tied, I was willing to give Eloise the W since she was a good sport, and also because she didn't completely break all the rules like I did. And now that I demonstrated the raw power of the Megadis launcher, it was time to test its accuracy versus an actual human. And who better to represent the human race than my nephews Davis and Beckham, whom you might recognize as these adorable kids from my Orbeez pool video six years ago. Let's start here. What happened? As far as like less adorable, more adorable. Uh, we grew up. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets the channel when I die between you guys? Rock, paper, scissors for the channel. Wow. Hey! Yeah, <laughs> congrats. We're gonna do three competitions. Predictions, who's gonna win? Us, easily. It's always us. Well, there's only one way to find out. All right, ignore me, guys. Don't worry about me. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so I clearly won round one, and for round two of our man versus machine accuracy competition, it was time to head to the foam pit for some diving catches. But first I want to talk to Mason, who is mainly in charge of making the Crunch Labs disc launcher, to find out what the hardest part was. Surprisingly, the launcher part wasn't that bad, but the really hard part was designing our own frisbees. Frisbees are kind of shaped like bowls, which means that they have a tendency to nest. That's right, like in your kitchen cabinet, they'll nest in each other, right? Yeah, really convenient there, not so great when you're trying to make a full auto frisbee launcher. So we had to take a lot of consideration into how to prevent them from nesting. It takes a really long, arduous process of prototyping to get to the final form. It was a lot of good data and we learned a ton of ways on how not to make a frisbee launcher. There's no such thing as failure, it's just learning one more way not to make a frisbee launcher. Nah, it's just good prototyping. Before you 3D print this, how, did, how is this designed? That's all done in 3D CAD, parametric modeling. It's kind of like Play-Doh, like digital Play-Doh. Kind of like digital Play-Doh, actually. Yeah. That's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good one. Just made that up right now. By the way, when I was at Apple and NASA, we used CAD almost every day. The rover was designed with that digital Play-Doh to make sure everything fits and you know the rotation is right, but also then you can do an analysis on it. You can do like a thermal analysis. Is it strong enough? You can do all this math on that CAD model, which is what we call that, that three-dimensional representation. Or you can even take it and then hit print, and then you can make it in a 3D printer, and then you're physically holding this 3D thing, right? And we tried a bunch of different geometries, went through a ton of iteration. We started with what was pretty much the most basic form of a Frisbee, just a flat coin shape. Right. And yeah, it doesn't nest, but it also doesn't really fly that well. Hmm. And there's actually a good reason it doesn't fly that well. In fact, when you open each build box, there's a QR code that leads to a video where I show you how to build it, and we talk through all the juicy physics for the toy. So here's a snippet from the Disc Launcher Build Box video where we talk about what it is exactly that makes Frisbees fly. You notice how the edges are always curved like this? That's because as the air passes over, the Frisbee grabs it and pushes it down. 
It's sort of like if you put a curved spoon in a stream of water, that curvature changes the direction of the stream to head more that way. But maybe you're like, yeah, but that's watermark and air is different. Well, I've got a poor man's wind tunnel here where I've taped some white threads to the front of this Frisbee. Now I'm gonna take this air and I'm gonna blow it straight directly down. If it doesn't have what's called the Kawanda effect where it curves it around, these will just keep going straight down with the air. But watch what happens. They curve around just like the water. And here's why that matters. The Frisbee is basically curving air down all around it. This is like it's wearing a jetpack. Because if you wear a jetpack, Newton's third law, you push a bunch of air down, that reacts and pushes you up in the air. Well, that's what a Frisbee is doing. It's jetpacking itself to stay afloat using the Kawanda effect. And that's just cool. All right, so back to our competition where my mega disc launcher made the perfect throw. And I caught it with the perfect tongue extension. That was followed by my near human nephews. And to be honest, Beckham laid out for his catch a little better than I did. So I was super generous and I gave them that round because I'm just a nice uncle. And that led us to the tiebreaker final round to see who could get a hole in one on this disc golf basket. But first let's check in with Josh to learn the hardest part about making the Mega Disc Launcher. So the hardest part was definitely getting this flywheel to stay together. So whatever we put on the outside in the original is just a rubber band that gets wrapped around the outside. But if we put a rubber band on this, which we tried, uh, it flies off because it's spinning so fast and increasing this diameter increases the centripetal force. So any little millimeter section of this disc has over a thousand pounds of centripetal force at full speed. So that means if you're like a glue molecule holding onto your piece, you, you're like in a tug of war with like a thousand pounds this way and that way, right? Right. Now when Josh says centripetal force, what he's talking about is the force that something feels as it's being spun around in a circle. The faster you go and the bigger the circle, the more force you feel. I used to love doing this as a kid, but it's the same force that keeps water from spilling out of a bucket as you swing it around and around and upside down. And it's also the same force that keeps you in your seat when you go upside down on a roller coaster. Everything is 6.6, .6, yep. right? Yeah. Once you scale something up, it's all gonna be that size times 6.6. .6. And in our case, the blue flywheel was so big and spinning so fast, we had a really hard time getting any sort of grippy material to stick to the spinning wood wheel. So we tried rubber uh, like L-channel. Um, we thought what goes really fast that is circular and it belts. Belts, like yeah. So the next we tried sandwiching some U-channel. So as you can see here, we had to prototype and experiment with a bunch of different materials materials before we finally found one that worked. So adding teeth increases surface area. So then we went to bigger teeth and that ended up being um, the best we got. The final design. Yeah. And so with that, it was time to head back to the final round of the competition with my nephews to once and for all settle the debate of man versus machine. And once again, my benevolence kicked in and I told them they could have four tries to try and hit the chain. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Beckham! <laughs> oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> Excuse me, it was a bodily function. At which point I stepped up and with a no look shot, let the Mega Disc Machine seal the deal. Boys, I think we all learned a very valuable lesson, which was? Bitch cricket, wise. cricket. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to man, and that's very generous, by the way, versus machine, uh, which is better? Depends. Okay, yeah, if you want to lose, that's true. Then no, 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 man no, no, is better. No, 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 if you want to win, then yes, it's true, machine. I think there's only one thing left to settle, which is why is it back up in the phone <laughs> pit? <laughs> Get in there! <laughs> Uncle still rule after all this time. Uncle still rule. Here we go. Hi! Oh, and if you're watching this and you haven't yet ordered your Build Box subscription from Crunch Labs, then what the heck are you waiting for? Visit crunchlabs.com with the parent, and once you're there, you can learn more about how it all works. Thanks for watching.